It's truly an engineering marvel and it is able to lift ship up to 3,000 tons. So astonishing. What if ships could sail over mountains? In China, that question isn't science fiction, it's reality. The weirdest sensation, weirdest, it's really insane. I think it's the greatest project i ever seen. Hidden deep in Guizhou's misty cliffs lies a machine so colossal it lifts entire cargo vessels nearly 200 meters into the sky. It would take only 30 to 40 minutes of travel time from top to bottom. Now this is a brilliant solution. It doesn't glide around mountains, it climbs them. Powered by enough energy to run a small city, this mechanical giant redefines what's possible in trade, transport, and national strategy. But why go to such extremes? What secret lies behind this towering water elevator? The answer isn't just engineering, it's ambition. And once you understand it, you'll never see infrastructure the same way again. The problem, a region cut off. Guizhou Province is one of China's most breathtaking landscapes, lush, mountainous, and full of winding rivers. But for decades, that same natural beauty acted as a barrier, isolating the region from the country's booming economic engine. Towering limestone peaks rise like dragon's teeth, slicing through the sky. Narrow valleys twist and descend without warning. Roads cling to the edges of cliffs while monsoon rains transform peaceful rivers into raging torrents. At the center of this terrain lies the Wujung River Basin, a place so dangerous it was once called the mountain that devours men. Transporting goods through this unforgiving geography was more than difficult. It was nearly impossible. Trucks inched along cracked mountain roads, often blocked by landslides. Traditional canal locks, effective in flatter regions, couldn't work here. The nearly 200-meter elevation change would have required at least 20 consecutive lock chambers, an engineering nightmare of time, cost, and complexity. The result was economic isolation. Shipping a single container from Guizhou to Shanghai could take two full weeks and cost up to three times more than similar routes elsewhere. With logistics so expensive and slow, industries failed to grow. Foreign investment overlooked the province, over 36 million people, more than the population of many countries, remained cut off from opportunity. While China's coastal cities soared, Guizhou stagnated. Its per capita GDP ranked among the lowest in the nation. It wasn't poor in talent or resources. It was simply trapped by its terrain. Politics weren't the problem. Physics was. For decades, Guizhou's geography dictated its fate. Then China changed the equation. Instead of forcing the land to adapt to trade, it asked a new question. What if trade could adapt to the land? That question set in motion one of the boldest engineering projects China has ever attempted. The radical solution, building a ship lift. Faced with the impossible, China didn't back down. It built a solution the world had never seen before, a ship elevator unlike anything on Earth. The answer came in the form of the Gupatan ship lift, a $7.7 .7 billion megastructure that lifts 10,000-ton cargo ships nearly 199 meters into the sky. Traditional canal locks weren't feasible, not here. The terrain was too steep, too dangerous, and too vast. An endless series of locks, 20 or more, would slow ships to a crawl and cost billions more. So China chose something radical, a vertical river highway. Instead of carving the mountain, they chose to climb it. The Gupatan shiplift compresses four days of river travel into just 2.5 hours. Imagine taking a football field-sized ship, placing it inside a massive steel chamber, and hoisting it straight up the side of a mountain. That's exactly what this machine does, again and again, every single day. But this wasn't just about speed. It was about opening the gates of prosperity, about linking a forgotten province directly to the Yangtze River, and from there, to the world. The decision was both bold and brilliant. With this one move, China didn't just change the course of a river, it altered the economic fate of an entire region. Inside the Beast, how the ship lift works. At first glance, it looks like a fortress, a wall of steel and concrete rising from the valley floor. But inside, 
The Gupitan shiplift is a carefully orchestrated machine. Every movement is measured, every part engineered for precision. This isn't just infrastructure, it's choreography. It begins with a ship entering a steel chamber 40 meters long and 12 meters wide. Hydraulic doors, each weighing 400 tons, seal shut behind them with a thunderous click. Pumps roar to life, flooding the chamber with water to cradle the ship like it's floating inside a vertical river. The chamber itself weighs 3,000 tons when empty. With a fully loaded cargo ship and water, the total weight rises to over 11,000 tons, the equivalent of nearly 2,000 elephants. And yet, this massive load begins to rise. Slowly, the ship climbs. It doesn't tilt. It doesn't sway. It lifts straight up, 199 meters, higher than the Statue of Liberty and the Great Pyramid of Giza combined. From inside, it feels like the world is falling away. Through small portholes, passengers can see the ground shrinking. Villages become specks. The river turns into a ribbon. It takes just 30 minutes for the lift to reach the top. Once there, the forward gates open, revealing not a mountain peak, but a calm, man-made reservoir. The ship glides forward into this new body of water, as if it hadn't just performed an impossible feat. And this process isn't a one-time stunt. The Gupitan shiplift runs up to 24 cycles per day, lifting and lowering ships with mechanical grace. Each cycle compresses what was once days of struggle into mere minutes. And it does so with such stability and accuracy that cargo, crew, and even fragile goods experience no disturbance. It's more than a machine. It's a floating titan, a technological marvel that reimagines what rivers, ships, and trade can do when the laws of nature are challenged by the force of engineering. This is how China built a highway into the sky, one cargo ship at a time. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Engineering Holding Back Disaster Lifting 11,000 tons of steel, water, and cargo straight into the air isn't just impressive, it's a high-stakes gamble with physics. A single flaw in the system, a misaligned gear, or a failed sensor could lead to catastrophic collapse. That's why the Gupitan shiplift isn't just strong, it's surgically precise. The lift operates through a massive chamber that holds both the ship and the water it floats in. This chamber travels along four colossal concrete towers, each one rooted 70 meters into the bedrock below. These towers aren't simply structural supports, they are the backbone of the entire system, guiding the lift's vertical movement with unwavering accuracy. Running through these towers are 256 ultra-strong steel cables, each one capable of towing a commercial aircraft. But they're not ordinary cables. Each consists of 127 strands of high tensile steel, tightly wound in a pattern that balances flexibility and sheer strength. If laid out end to end, they'd stretch over 80 kilometers. The lifting process relies on an intricate gear rack mechanism where interlocking metal teeth, engineered from a specially formulated alloy, pull the chamber upward like a skyscraper-sized cogwheel. These teeth aren't just strong, they're resilient, designed to absorb micro-vibrations from winds, moving water, and even geological tremors. But the challenge doesn't end with strength. The entire system must remain perfectly balanced through every second of its 30-minute climb. That's where hydraulic dampers come in, massive cylinders that contain enough fluid to fill an Olympic swimming pool. These devices absorb shocks from the environment, including wind bursts, uneven loading, and even minor earthquakes, ensuring the ship remains stable throughout the lift. Control is handled by a five-computer redundant monitoring system. Each computer operates independently while constantly checking the others. If any discrepancy is detected, the system stops immediately. In case of power failure, hydroelectric backup generators kick in, ensuring that the chamber can still be safely lowered. Every second, the system tracks cable tension, chamber tilt, wind speed, and pressure fluctuations. Thousands of real-time micro-adjustments happen automatically to prevent disaster. When the stakes are this high, there's no room for guesswork. The Gupitan shiplift is not just a marvel of modern engineering, it's a masterclass in how to control the uncontrollable. The Impact From Dead Zone to Trade Hub Before the Gupitan shiplift, Guizhou was largely invisible in China's trade network, a mountainous province blocked by geography and overlooked by development. But that's no longer the case. 
Today, Guizhou has become a vital inland hub, directly connected to the Yangtze River system and beyond. It's more than transformation. It's a rebirth. Shipping costs from the region have fallen by 67%, and what once took two weeks now takes less than a single day. With over 5 million tons of cargo now passing through Gupatan each year, this once cut-off province has entered China's logistical fast lane. Industrial output has surged by 42%. Industries that were previously impractical, agriculture, food processing, and electronics assembly, are now growing. Foreign investment has skyrocketed by 83%, pulled in by infrastructure that's not hypothetical, but tangible. Where subsistence farming once dominated, tech parks and logistics zones have emerged. Villages that barely survived are now pulsing with opportunity. The project has created thousands of jobs in shipping, engineering, tourism, and services. For the first time in decades, local talent isn't fleeing. It's returning. Families are reuniting. Young workers are choosing to stay. Entire towns have pivoted from survival to growth. And then there's tourism. The shiplift itself has become a national attraction. Visitors flock to observation decks, river cruises, and engineering tours. Hotels, restaurants, and travel services have flourished. Guizhou isn't just benefiting from trade. It's building an entire ecosystem around it. The shift is emotional as much as economic. Pride has replaced frustration. Possibility has replaced stagnation. Guizhou has rewritten its future not through slogans or luck, but through bold physical investment. And the story isn't finished, it's still rising. Because when you carve a path through a mountain, you don't just move cargo, you move history forward. The Strategy – Future-Proofing China To the outside world, the Gupatan shiplift may seem like an impressive feat of engineering, a mechanical marvel carved into the mountains. But for China, it represents far more. It's not just about moving ships. It's a carefully calculated move in a much larger strategic game, one where infrastructure becomes a shield, a weapon, and a guarantee for the future. China understands the danger of depending too heavily on international trade routes. Coastal ports and global shipping lanes are vulnerable, exposed to disruption from war, sanctions, political tensions, or even natural disasters. If those arteries were ever cut off, the consequences would be immediate and severe. That's why China is quietly building an inland network of infrastructure designed to function even if the world turns away. The Gupatan shiplift is a key piece of that vision. It connects the previously isolated Guizhou province to the mighty Yangtze River, creating a direct route to China's industrial core and to the port city of Shanghai. But it's not alone. It works in concert with massive undertakings like the Three Gorges Dam, the South to North Water Transfer Project, and a lattice of inland waterways stretching thousands of kilometers. Together, these form what China calls internal circulation, a system that ensures domestic resilience even in times of global uncertainty. This strategy is part of the country's dual circulation policy, which aims to reduce reliance on foreign trade by strengthening internal supply chains while maintaining a global presence. And it doesn't stop at China's borders. Engineers who built Gupatan are now sharing their expertise abroad. Under the Belt and Road Initiative, they're helping design ports, dams, and canals throughout Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Africa. China is exporting not just hardware, but vision. The Gupatan system even plays a role in climate resilience. As the weather becomes more unpredictable, controlling water flow is critical. This lift not only moves cargo, but it also manages floods, ensures navigability during heavy rains, and stabilizes trade in volatile seasons. Efficiency, power, protection. Gupatan delivers all three. It's not just a shortcut across a mountain. It's a strategic firewall, a silent force prepared for whatever comes next. The Legacy, a new era of infrastructure. The Gupatan shiplift isn't the conclusion. It's the prologue to a new era. More than a marvel of engineering, it's a working prototype for what the future of infrastructure could look like. Not content to work around nature, it dares to reshape it, lifting rivers into the sky, and with them, the fortunes of entire regions. Across China's rugged western provinces, similar projects are already in development. The innovations born in Gupatan are being upgraded, scaled, and refined. 
designed to lift heavier ships, reach higher altitudes, and move faster than ever before. These are not isolated megastructures. They are templates for domestic transformation and global influence. Chinese engineers who helped construct Gupatan are now advising on projects across Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Africa, exporting both technology and strategy. What began as a solution to a local shipping dilemma has become a symbol of geopolitical intent. While the world watches China's gleaming skyline and bullet trains, it's the less visible systems, the ones hidden in valleys and rivers, that might hold the greatest long-term impact. These projects aren't just concrete and steel, they are physical policies, manifestations of vision, foresight, and control. Gupatan proves one powerful truth. If you can lift ships over mountains, there's little you can't do. The Gupatan ship lift is more than a machine. It's a message, built not just to move ships, but to move the future. It represents China's long-term vision in action. By lifting vessels nearly 200 meters into the air, it also lifts the fortunes of entire regions, connects forgotten provinces, and secures inland trade routes that bypass global vulnerabilities. This isn't just infrastructure, it's strategy made physical. It's what happens when engineering, ambition, and national policy merge into one bold statement. And while the world marvels at bullet trains and gleaming skylines, it may be these hidden systems, tucked into mountains and rivers, that quietly shape tomorrow's power balance. Because when a country can lift ships over mountains, what can't it do? If you found this story fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our next video, exploring more of the world's most mind-blowing megastructures.